Welcome back to Katoa Shoujo. Last time we were on a, not a date with Lily. It's kind of like a shopping day with the Lily. Um, my my, uh, my uh, camera died midway, so I wasn't able to finish my three episodes this week. So I have to start over? That's weird to say. Probably just going to record one episode today because it's pretty late and I don't have that much time. Um, and I'll probably record tomorrow for maybe the rest. I don't know how much is left. Uh, this episode's dragging longer than the part two, so. Part two only lasted like a day, so. Whatever. Alright, so Muto reads equations and formulas to us one by one in his usual unenthusiastic monotone directly from the book. It's, the music is really loud. It's really low. I don't know why it's so loud. <clears throat> It's possible that he might be excited about what he teaches us. Sometimes he can display an awkward spark of passion for it, as if he's starting to get into the material. Most days, however, are like this one. Our recovering is fairly simple, so I find it increasingly difficult to keep my concentration on him. It's not too long until my legs begin aching again, which is what only makes it even harder. Why would your legs be aching? You're just sitting there. I'm almost starting to regret walking around the city yesterday with Lily. Since leaving the hospital, I've done very little physical exertion. <laughs> Walking to and from the local corner store hardly counts. Despite Emmy's attempts when I first arrived to Yamaku, I've largely given up on the idea of ever returning to my old level of fitness. I have little doubt that why walk well, that's why walking around town for so many hours made me quite so sore. It's depressing, and it reminds me of the one in the of one more thing I can't do since my had my heart attack. It makes me feel pathetic. No. Yukizawa? Oh god, that's her last name. It's odd for Muto to ask Hanako a question, but not unheard of. She quickly jumps to her feet, a little startled, and immediately pins her eyes onto him. She knows that Muto calling on her is rare, so all eyes in the classroom are going to be on her. This way, she doesn't run at the risk of making eye contact with anyone else. Y yes In this particular example of a redox reaction, the combustion of methane reaction actually produces one more product than is listed. That product is... Even though it's a softball question, she timidly waits a bit before answering, biting down slightly on her lower lip, as if to keep her concentration. Um, he heat? Well done. This is an exothermic reaction. I forgot what his voice was. With the reaction, giving more heat than is put into it. Receiving a nod from Muto, Hanako taken takes her seat once again and gives a relieved sigh. Shaky start, but it's something. It would be nice to take her out for her birthday. Somewhere different than the usual isolation of her room and the tea room. But the progress she's made up until now, I don't think she'll have much of a problem going to the city. Alright then. For the remainder of this class, I'd like you to work in groups of three or four on the problems in chapter two. I'll be here if you need me. We have a group of four, don't we? Or Because we, we can't be in a group of three with just Hanako. Muto sits behind his desk, pulls some loose sheets out of a folder, and starts on some kind of paperwork of his own. I thought teachers were supposed to do that kind of thing after class, not during it. Well, what's he supposed to do while well, you guys do your work? Of course. <laughs> You're so big. Regardless, I look to my right and pick out someone from a group with to form a group with. Given the two smiling faces hovering near mine, I don't think I don't I don't get much of a choice in the matter. Suppose we have a group then. Hey Chan, you wanna work together? Okay, okay, that's great. It's really been a while. The class begins the process of noisily shuffling the desks around. Shizune doing the same as she puts her f in front of mine. She's a little lucky not to be able to hear the din of the classroom, which is loud enough to cause some discomfort. Truth be told, working with Shizune and Misha is probably a good outcome. Shizune and I are pretty good at the subject, and Misha has really nice handwriting. <laughs> as I look to Misha, I notice a tall figure behind her. She looks so creepy. I notice a tall figure behind her. The shadow catches Misha's attention as well as she turns a dark-haired observer. Let's go. Good afternoon, Hanako. Um, hello. Shizune notices Hanako. After looking up and following the gazes of Misha and I, in a quick measure, she taps Misha on the shoulder to get her attention before her signing away. Huh. Oh, I thought Hanako tapped her on the shoulder. Okay. Shichen says, if you're looking for a group, you can join ours. Aw. Hanako looks down and blushes a little at the offer. Out of all the people in the class, Hanako's most familiar with the three of us, so it's reasonable that she'd come to us first. 
Then again, her actually coming up to a group and with the intention of joining them, something she apparently very rarely did before. You should have at least went to Hanako first, bud, I think. That would have been a little nicer, but that's fine. She leaves briefly to drag her desk over. Aren't they on, like, completely opposite sides of the classroom? He's, They're, like, at, like, the window part. And she was at, like, the door. So she has to drag her desk, like, all the way across the classroom. Hmm. I guess we get to play again, Hee-chan. You hardly ever play with us anymore. I wonder why. You two always seem to have some ulterior motive. Hmm. <laughs> that hurt, Hee-chan. They almost think you were insulting me. But, Hee-chan, I know you're joking. Such a great sense of humor about it. It'd be awful if someone were to take advantage of your good nature. Like making you help with their work. Hmm. <laughs> Shizune seems excited for a second. A little surprised, I'm willing to challenge her. But when she sees Hanako coming back, she backs off with a smile. I guess the mind games are over for early today. Hanako gently sets her desk down in front of Misha's. Her eyes are locked downwards. I'm left wondering why until I would look around the class. Most are busy setting up their own groups, but a few are casting curious glances at her. At this range, it's hard to tell whether that's where their interest in her ends, or if they're just talking about her as well. Yeah, she's usually in the back, right? So nobody really pays her that much mind. She's like the last one in the classroom anyway, too. It's strange. No one bats an eyelid when Hanako runs out of class to avoid group work. Now she's making an effort to st They're staring at her as if she's done something wrong. We all move to sort ourselves out, spreading our textbooks and worksheets around the larger surface created by the four joined desks. It's almost... it isn't long... My brain shut off. It isn't long before the class as a whole gets down to work. Hi, Hanako. It's nice to finally work with you. Y yeah. Hmm. Are you the reason He-chan has been avoiding us lately? She-chan says it's a little rude, but if He-chan wanted to spend time with a cute girl, it's understandable. Uh, I, I don't... Th I think it's like that. Hanako starts to fidget, unused to this kind of attention. <clears throat> I think that an ordinary person would drop the conversation by now, but Misha is the antithesis of Hanako. Part of that includes being blind to ordinary social cues, while Hanako is overly sensitive to them. Because of that, Misha barrels ahead with the questions, too quickly for me to get a chance to interject, a chance to interject, and guide the discussion somewhere more comfortable. Really? So he wasn't hanging out with you yesterday? No? Oh, shit. <laughs> I can feel my cover being blown already. Lily didn't want Hanako to... How did they know that we were gone yesterday? That's so random. I can feel my cover being blown already. Lily didn't want Hanako to know that we were out buying presents for her, let alone planning out her birthday party. It wouldn't be good for her to find out. Yeah, I was doing something else. You know how it is. Hmm. Really? I wonder what was so important for Hee-chan to blow us off like that. What? Did we ignore them for something? I don't remember them asking us. If it wasn't to spend time with Hanako, then what could it be? It's really interesting. Now this is starting to feel like an interrogation. I'm surprised at how Misha's able to exert such a feeling of pressure without actually intending to. Were you with Lily? Oh god, she's so upset. Out of nowhere, Hanako manages to stumble out the answer. She may be dreadfully quiet and shy, but she's very intuitive. What makes you say that? Yesterday, Lily said something similar. Hmm. <laughs> God, she's so cute. Suspicious, e -tan. I demand that you explain yourself. Hey, shouldn't we be doing the assignment? But it's so mysterious. <laughs> Shizuna is so excited over there. It's so mysterious. Even Hanako wants to know. I turn to look at Hanako. It's true. From her expression on her face, it's obvious she wants to know as well. I think we're past the point where I could weasel out of having to provide an explanation. I apologize to Lily in my mind. She really did want to keep it a secret, but now it doesn't seem possible anymore. Just say, like, you were with Kenji. <laughs> and just be like, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I was hanging out with Kenji, and Kenji's not going to fucking talk to these women. I feel a rush of conflicting emotions, so jumbled that I can't readily identify them. But they crash around in my head as I try to calm down and speak. All right. I tell, I'll tell you. I went into town with Lily, but it wasn't what you think. Lily and I were for Hanako's birthday. We were cats out of the bag, but it looks like Hanako's taking it better than I thought she would. A brief silence around our little group as Shizune and Misha look at each other sheepishly. sheepishly. I could tell that they didn't expect their game to turn out like this. Misha looks up to Hanako in order to apologize, then pauses. 
Hanako is starting, staring at the middle of the desk and barely moving. A maudlin expression on her face. I guess I was wrong about her taking it well. Hanako, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a few seconds pause, but Hanako lifts and shakes her head. It, it's okay. Her expression looks odd, like she's very tired. That doesn't seem natural, but it's nothing alarming. Nobody really wants to continue the current conversation, so we open our textbooks and begin the group work. This is pretty dull. All the equations we're, we're supposed to work out as a group will take a little while. Most of it's going to be boringly mechanical. Whoa. It also doesn't help that it didn't go as bad as it could have. It has left an awkward atmosphere around us. Still, we managed. She's in a nice face, betrays that she has the same expectations for our work as I do. What? And the two of us begin to write our group's results. Misha, on the other hand, is scrunching up her lips, is very visibly trying to make out heads or tails of what we're doing. Hanako is looking on quietly, absorbing what I, what we write and what I say. She usually has the same expression when the teacher speaks. It's a shame her attendance is so unreliable. But the way she takes in information, I think she'd do quite well in class. She actually followed the lessons regularly. I wonder if this is why Shizune seems so hard on her. Hey, Hanako, do you understand this? Misha looks to Hanako, but I suspect her hope is more to find a comrade in ignorance rather than genuine help. I, um, not really, I guess. I'm surprised by how tense she is answering, but she settles back down. She breathes out, and the way her upper body and lower head reminds me of a deflating balloon. You okay? I could go over this a bit if you want. Hanako shakes her head slightly, but then again, I don't think she needs the extra explanation despite what she said. Misha quickly interjects, entirely oblivious. I end up slowly going through how we ended up at one of our results, step by step. Times like this remind me that this kind of work may not be mechanical for everyone, but rather feels that way due to me and my grasp of the subject. It's a satisfying feeling. As Misha brings her bald fist into an open hand realization, I discover another nice feeling. My explanation got through to her. She manages to work out the next equation by herself with a minimum of guidance. Throughout all this, Hanako is unusually responsive. She's normally very quiet, but no one can see still see her eyes ro roving periodically over some of the landscape of the classroom in front of her, or anxiously moving her hands in some sort of way, or shifting her shoulders periodically. What? <clears throat> right now, these small movements I've gotten used to seeing are all missing. Someone not moving at all is definitely weird. Even Misha can tell there's something wrong. Hanako, are you sure you're okay? Y yes. <clears throat> are you sure? I'm fine. A little more strongly this time, but she turns away as she says it. It only makes me doubt her answer. Yet, at the same time, I can tell she doesn't want to talk about it any further. Having already had one awkward conversation today, I'm not still fully over. I don't want to pursue the matter too much either. We settle back into our routine, debating over our answers, whether a doubt comes up but as time goes on, I notice that Hanako isn't talking at all. It's frustrating. She's made so much progress. It makes me a little angry at Shizune and Misha for undoing the surprise Lily had wanted to keep a secret so much. I know I'm at fault, too. Maybe I could have kept it under wraps somehow. Just say you were hanging out with Kenji. That's literally all you had to say. Shizune has noticed Hanako's silence as well. Somehow. <laughs> and is getting angsty. I could see it on her face. It's strange that even though she's deaf, Shizune has perceived Hanako's unusual quietness sooner than Misha. <laughs> hmm. Hanako, you're being too quiet. You have to contribute too. Someday we might work on a bigger project, like one that's so big it's worth celebrating afterwards, like with ice cream or cake. If you act like this, we won't take you along. I can tell that they're trying to tease her to bring her out of her shell, but I don't think that's the kind of approach that will work on Hanako. It'll make her feel worse. Guys, don't tease her like that. Mm hmm. Chi-chan, it's all in good fun. Chi-chan says she teases everyone anyway. They do back off, though, with Misha moving away from the issue and by me asking a question again. I'm seeing how difficult the problem is she is working on is. I don't know whether it was a skillful dodge or a mere coincidence. It takes way more time than necessary, because Shizune keeps disagreeing with me while I'm trying to explain it to Misha, and Misha is quick in to believe her over me. So quick, in fact, that she forgets to translate what Misha's saying. Hey, the clock is kind of ticking down. We should speed it up a little. He-chan, you sound like a little like Shi-chan there. 
Just because I looked at my watch? Jeez, is that really all it takes? Time management, and suddenly I'm the student council president? Whoa, he is like, really, oh god, why is she crying? I feel so bad. I look at Hanako's desk to see how she's doing and freeze. Her papers are covered in equations, but Hanako's only halfway there. Seems like she hasn't written anything in the past 20 minutes. She's crying. <laughs> and I realize that I want to kick myself for how dumb I've been. I should have known that someone so fragile as Hanako wasn't just going to brush off what happened so easily. But I've been too eager to move on from an awkward situation to notice. She has been slowly shutting down for at least half until the last half hour. And I had no clue. Her pen is still in her hand, but she doesn't open slowly spin it around like she usually does. There isn't a single idle movement from Hanako. Mm -hmm. Only the fact that she tries to inch away once she feels Shizune, Misha, and me looking at her tells me that she's even st still conscious. God, we look away. And, at least in my case, it's partly out of shame that it's gotten to this point. Though on the outside, she has shut down almost completely. I know that it's a different story on the inside. What kind of things is she thinking about as she tries harder and harder to shrink into herself? As if by willing, she could somehow disappear. Everyone is looking at her now, stealing quick glances in between putting the finishing touches on their work. Misha attempts to ask her what's wrong, but that only makes the problem worse. If she weren't frozen to her seat, she probably would run out of the room right now. Misha's questions are loud enough to be heard throughout the entire classroom. And it's for a second that I'm ready to snap at her, because I can only imagine how much worse it is making Hanako feel. Of course, if I were to do that, it would only make the situation worse. I'd believe that Hanako has gotten stronger, and she has, but it wasn't enough. I was too eager to believe it. Now she's terrified, alone in the middle of the classroom, and there's nothing I can do without drawing more attention to her. <sighs> it's infuriating. Misha's worried, and even Shizune's biting her lip. None of us know how to deal with the situation, so I decided to call Muto. His judgment would probably be better than ours. I look up and manage to catch his eye, silently motioning for him to come over. I want to make as little fuss about it as possible, since if there's anything that would make this worse, it's more attention being focused on her. I know that Hanako can see everyone staring at our group, specifically at her, because they know that if it was a problem, it has to be her. Everyone knows her, and it's the first thing that anyone's mind would leap to. Her reputation for being a truant has marked her an unusual person, even in the unusual Yamaku. Who knows how many times she's been stared at her before, what times they have stared at her before. It was because she's seen the class staring at her so much that she fears their gazes like she does, cowering from them. It takes t the time it takes for Muto to walk over it must be like an eternity to Hanako. She looks as if she's ready to fall over. Jesus Christ. Muto quickly begins to ask us what's wrong before catching himself as he does to Hanako. As he sees Hanako. Did, did we upset her? Don't worry. Muto bends after calming Misha and looks intently at Hanako's face. Hi, Kazawa. Can I help you at all? His voice is hushed and gentle. Everyone's acting so differently around Hanako now that the whole class has noticed something's wrong with her. Hanako doesn't respond, so Muto gently rests a hand on her shoulder. She starts shaking at his touch, but won't even look up. Hanako continues to stare into the equations on her desk, vision so unfocused that I doubt she can even see them. She is worse than before. I remember not even that an hour ago. I remember that not even an hour ago, she was able to talk to him almost normally. Muto grimaces a bit as he stands again, but now his expression's changed. You can see he hasn't exactly unaffected by what happened either. He takes a breath to settle himself before speaking in a very quiet voice. I'm a little impressed at how quickly he takes control of the situation. I mean, I'm sure he has to be trained for this sort of thing. Is that it? Nothing's wrong then? Hmm. Muto seems to say to that to no one in particular. However, his words sound convincing enough that most people who were looking at Hanako now turn away, getting back to their work. Damn, he's genius. He gives a quick glance to his left and right. Several people at the desks around us staring curiously, but other than that, we seem to have escaped attracting too much attention. Uto notices me doing the same as him and smiles a little, in his usual stilted way. I think, for Ikazawa's sake, that it would be good to quickly take her somewhere away from others. Nakai, Nakamichi... Could you please take Igazawa out of the classroom? I'll keep everyone settled, so please don't worry about anything about her but her, okay? He looks at Misha to tell her to interrupt his words for Shizune. Interpret his words for Shizune, but she's already finishing her translation by the time he does so. It's remarkable how little thought she needs to sign. 
and she does. Uh, she still looks quite dazed. Otherwise, nodding, Shizuna and I stand and move to either side of Hanako. Muto steps back to allow us some room and t talks to the table behind us. Some people there have begun to mutter between themselves about what's going on. We look at each other before lowering ourselves in unison. Can you hear the plane in the background? There's a plane in my back. Hold on. <laughs> we look at each other before lowering ourselves in unison, taking one arm around each other for each of our shoulders and lifting. I need to like slow down when I'm reading these things. The two of us begin to walk at a slow pace to make sure we don't inadvertently hurt her. As much as we try to make this look normal, I'm quite sure that there would be many more gazes on us if not for Muto's distraction. Eventually, thankfully, we reach the door and go through. Nobody's outside, so we walk down the hallway. It doesn't seem like it's making her more at ease than she was when she was in the classroom. Finally, I ask if she wants to just sit down. For a while, we simply stay in place and wait for her to say something. Shizune tentatively rubs Hanako's shoulder a little, but there's no response. I don't think she likes you, Shizune. <laughs> Eventually, she shakes her head a little. Shizune tries again. Both of us are looking at her, so we pick up on it immediately. Shizune's hand again comes to rest on Hanako's shoulder. She awakens, her face lifting to two very worried and anxious people looking at her. And she looks at us silently for a while. I'm initially worried she might freak out or do something extreme. But those fears prove unwarranted as her expression slowly changes from an almost lifeless blank slate a more normal, withdrawn shyness. She wordlessly lowers her head, her eyes evasively moving to the side. She looks embarrassed, almost ashamed. I want to say something, anything, to help, but I can't, though. I don't really know what just happened, or even what caused it. I feel helpless and ashamed of myself for not being of any use. Shizune sighs before looking at me. Even without words, I think I can tell what she's asking. I'll take Hanako to the nurse. Is that okay by you? I try to communicate my intentions through hand gestures, but I don't feel like I managed to get through to her very well. Shizune makes a dreary face in response to my gestic uh, gesticulations, confirming my impression. She stabs her finger in the air decisively, first at me, then at Hanako, then towards the stairs. <laughs> she waits for me to nod before pointing to herself, then pointing to the classroom door. <laughs> oh. I get the feeling Shizune is much better at this than I am. I nod at her, since her plan is, after after all, the same as mine. Shizune gets ready to make her exit, but only as she leaves after looking at Hanako for quite some time. You okay with me taking you to the nurse's office? Hanako doesn't say anything or nod, but she stands up in place by herself. When I begin to walk, she obediently follows. I've read all about people being catatonic before, but I think this time I'm seeing it for myself. She looks extremely tired. After everything that's happened, it's not a surprise. After Hanako silently takes off her shoes and lies on the bed in the infirmary, the nurse and I take our leave. He shuts the curtain behind us. We both take a seat, and I quietly go thoroughly through everything that happened in quite some detail. I want to understand what happened, and the nurse has as good chance as anyone of knowing. He nods throughout my explanation, his face looking troubled as I finish. Well, it must have been very troubling for you to have to see all this. I'd be lying if it said it wasn't. I get that she fainted, but I don't really understand anything about why it happened or why she's acting like this. You know, it's... but his face is clouded. You don't know either? Well, yes and no. It's complicated. I assume you've heard about the concept of patient confidentiality at some point. This is a bit like a minefield in that respect. I'm going to put this pretty bluntly. This is a matter of Farikazawa, me, and her therapist. I move to protest, but think better of it. I want to deny what he says, but if I think this through rationally, what he says makes perfect sense. I understand. Good, good. I wish I could help you more, but I think that Ikazawa needs right now isn't somebody prying into her past or her emotions. She needs somebody to be there for her. She needs a friend. For what it's worth, I think you've done well in bringing her here. Sounds like you and your friends dealt with the same situation well, too. I'd give you a lollipop or a sticker as a reward, but... Might be a little too old for that, either. He gives a cocky grin, obviously trying his best to lighten the atmosphere. Not really in a laughing mood, but he does manage to get a smile out of me. Thanks. Uh, do you mind if I stay here with Hanako? I appreciate the thought, but I think it would be better for her to let her rest for now. She'll be back to her dormitory room this evening, so you can visit her then. I agree with him before standing. 
feels like all I can ever do around the nurse is humbly agree to what he says. But it was the same with the doctors in the hospital, too. The walk back to the classroom is a long one, my mind feeling heavy under the weight of so many things that happened so suddenly. Even as I re-enter the classroom, I'm thinking about Hanako. My stomach feels like it's turning into knots. Well, I think again how to deal with her. I still don't know what I'm going to say when I see her again. Thankfully, the class doesn't pay me much heed. There are a couple of questioning glances, but overall, not many people seem to be aware of what happened. Ruto raises his eyebrows to get my attention when I pass by his desk. Okay, I take it he's Ikazawa's in the infirmary now? Yeah, I took her there. The nurse said I should let her rest. Ruto nods, assuring me that I made the right call. He scratches his chin for a second before rising from his desk. Everyone, I want you to continue with the exercise. Nikai, I'll see you in the hallway, please. The speech is hushed, but overall, he doesn't seem to be acting too differently from how he usually does. Being a teacher, maybe it's to be expected. As we go out of the hallway, I notice him taking a quick glance left and right to check if there are any students milling around. The hallway is nearly soundless, but I can't think of anything except waiting for Muto to speak. Nakai, what do you think the purpose of this school is? Uh, to cater to the needs of disabled students? Muto scratches his head as he shakes it. No, if we wanted to do that, we would have built a whole new school from scratch. One floor, talking whiteboards, that kind of thing. Look around, Nakai. The school is about giving you all a future that would have been denied in a regular education. Huh? Think of it this way. If we wanted to get to... <laughs> if we wanted you to graduate and go straight to a hospital, do you think that we put this much effort? The bluntness of Muto's statement temporarily stuns me, causing me to forget about the immediate situation. No? That's right. We all want you to leave here as useful members of society. I am not quite sure I'm following you. I have high hopes for you, Nakai. You're possibly the first student I've had to get my lectures. Really? Like Shizune doesn't? That isn't something that a teacher should be admitting so freely. You could easily take your studies of science when well into university. You ever considered that? I can't say I have. Well, what have you considered? For your future, that is. I can't say I've put much thought into my future. For a moment, I distinctly remembered of Lily's questioning me about the same thing. It's only been a little over five months since I've been gasp I was gasping for air on the ground. It's too soon to be thinking about the future, and besides, Hanako's problems seem much bigger to me right now. Muto gives a disapproving sigh before continuing. Think of this as an opportunity. Here you have boundless facilities, good teachers, plus the added bonus of the nurse and his staff. You should be doing nothing but thinking of the future. Uh, right. As I raise my head to mute his glance, a thought occurs to me. It's almost like Muto has totally sidestepped the issue at hand. Excuse me, but uh, why do none of the staff seem to care when Hanako skips classes? I've seen you watch her walk around, uh, walk out of class more than once. Shouldn't you at least say something? Well, Nakai, it's not really that simple. Every student here has special needs. If it weren't for that, then we wouldn't have a school here. For example, I wouldn't keep you in class if you're having trouble breathing, would I? <laughs> Damn. But that's not... <clears throat> Muto cuts me off before I can even think about finishing my sentence. Igazawa's case is very much like that. Instead of CPR or a pacemaker, she needs his time and space. The facility was made aware of this from the day she arrived here. Thus, whenever she feels the need to leave classes, we let her do so. And even though she isn't a star pupil, she seems to pass all exams, so hasn't affected her ability to study. Isn't that enough? Hmm. I open my mouth and protest but I can't find any fault in his argument. While her condition does seem first seem to be wholly psychological, its worst effects have been on her psyche. <clears throat> Still puts me off, though. Isn't he just passing on the responsibility for her problem? Surely she can't go like this for her entire life. I understand that you might not be used to this kind of thing yet. It's been a big change for you. That said, it's less than a year until graduation now. Maybe you won't have to get used to the this school. If you keep your head down, I'm sure you'll do well enough in your exams. I numbly nod, more to the simply acknowledge the fact that I'm listening than out of agreement. I felt like I was getting used to the school, but it feels like it's just getting thrown back in my face. But what about Hanako? I believe, well, I hope, that she'll perform well enough to do what she wants to do. What that is, I don't know. Not all students leave school with the idea of what they want to do, unfortunately. He 
It takes care to emphasize his last word as if it wasn't quite clear enough already. It gives me a moment to mull his words over. Today's been a troublesome day for you. I doubt that you'd want to concentrate too much anyway after that's what's happened. So I'll allow you to take the rest of the day off. Your grades have been good in this class so far, which makes me think that you won't have any trouble catching up on what we've been doing. He gives a small smile along with his praise, as if to make up for his seriousness of his lecturing before now. Go collect your things. See you tomorrow. Right. Thank you. Muto's roundabout speech has left thoughts scattered. I'm still not any closer to working out what I can do to help Hanako, if anything, and my mind is all the more confused after what Muto said. I'm also still bothered by the fact that Hanako helped at least as much by Shizune, her enemy by proxy, as by myself. Hmm. I don't know whether that is just male br bravado or genuine concern. <clears throat> it's a little bit of both, I'm sure. While I collect Hanako's and my things from the class, I continue to try and sort out my feelings. <sighs> I want to say that I understand her, and that I'm there for her. But while I might have been able to say that just yesterday, I can't say it now. I wish I could. Hmm. Did I take my things to the nurse, or did I keep her things? <laughs> I hope we didn't keep her things, that'd be really weird. How are we all doing out there? <clears throat> 30 minutes in? Or so? I lay in my bed, trying to collect my thoughts. Okay, it's one of these. After Hanukkah's panic attack, I found myself fundamentally reassessing the relationship we share. What I know about her. I had a hard enough time dealing four months in the hospital. One look at her scars tells me that she was in for a lot longer than I was. Be that as it may, I know next to nothing about her past. She has told me about the house fire, but only in the most basic way. What of her family? I still haven't asked Lily about them. There hasn't been a good opportunity to bring it up. I don't know where she grew up, nor what her old school was like, nor of her past friends, her wishes and ambitions, not even her tastes in music, food, or movies. All the little things I knew about all my old friends. It's what I've been doing for all this time I've been with her and Lily. Good question. In the distance, I hear the bells signaling the end of classes. With any luck, Lily will soon realize that neither Hanako nor I are around and return to the dormitories. My phone starts to ring, cutting my thinking short. It quite startles me as I've been rarely called since coming to Yamaku. That's weird. <laughs> Hello, Hisao Nakai speaking. Oh, Hisao, I'm glad I found you. You weren't at any of our usual places, so I thought this would be the fastest way to contact you. I probably should have guessed it would have been Lily, as she's one of the few people I've given my number to. Even though the phone, her voice sounds slightly on the edge. I, uh, Hanago and I left class early. She had some kind of panic attack. The line goes silent. If it weren't for the background static, I would have thought Lily had hung up. I understand. Could you come to my room? I'd like to talk with you. Sure, I'd uh, I'd appreciate the chance to talk for a bit, actually. Good, good. I also have some bad news. I think we should discuss this in person. It's hard to grasp the seriousness of the situation from Lily's tone. She sounds so calm most of the time. That could be a good or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. Alright, I'll be right there. I collect Hanako's school things from my desk and head straight for Lily's room. <clears throat>